Okay, so next topic is vectors. And if you remember from Nat 5, a vector is a geometric quantity that has magnitude, so that's the length of the vector, and direction, so that is the angle or the bearing of the vector. So the first bit of this topic we're going to look at at higher level is to use position vectors in 2D and 3D and to use a distance formula in 3D. So by the end of this, we need to be able to find the components of a 2D and 3D vector, to find the magnitude of a 2D and a 3D vector, and to know how to calculate the distance between two 3D points. So, vectors. There are three important vectors which are called i, j, and k, and these are known as the unit vectors. So these are three perpendicular vectors that are one unit long and which point in the same direction as the x, y, and z axes. So if we zoom in on this picture, you can see that vector i is going one unit along the x-axis, vector j is going one unit along the y-axis, and vector k is going one unit up the z-axis. So we zoom back out again. So when we're writing these in component form, you can see that vector i, one unit along the x, 0, 0 for the y and the z. j has no units along the x-axis, but one unit along the y, and then none along the z. So it's 0, 1, 0. Vector k is therefore 0, 0, 1. There's also another important vector that we need to know about, and that's called the zero vector, which has all the components at zero, and it's basically the component form of the origin, because as you know, the coordinates of the origin in 3D would be zero, zero, zero. So, if we're describing a vector in terms of its components, a point P in 3D space can be represented in three different ways. As a coordinate, so we know how to do that from that 5. So, for example, if P was a coordinate 10 to 7, then to plot that coordinate, we would have gone 10 units along the X, 2 units back along the Y, and then 7 units up and marked our coordinate. As a position vector, which is the vector from the origin to P, then you're thinking about the journey that you're going on. So from O to P, you're going 10 to 7. But instead of writing it horizontally in coordinate form, we're writing it vertically so that we're showing that it's a position vector. In terms of unit vectors, so using the I, J, and K components we were just looking at, OP would be 10I, because we're going 10 times the I vector, plus 2j, plus 7k. So 10, 2, and 7 are the components of the vector, and they're written horizontally for a coordinate and vertically for a position vector, and that's really important to distinguish between those two things because questions sometimes ask you to write the final answer as a coordinate or as a position vector, so it matters whether you're writing it horizontally or vertically. So, if we're given the coordinates of two points A and B, we can use this knowledge of position vectors to find the components of the vector AB by considering a pathway from A to B via the origin. So let's zoom in on this picture. So we want a pathway going from A to B. So this here is going to be our vector AB. Now, we know that OA, and we can also refer to that as a lowercase a, is the vector going from the origin to point A. We also know that OB, or lowercase b vector, is a position vector going from O to B. So if we want to find the path from A to B, we can go from A back to O and then forward to B. 
So we'll change colour and think about if we're going backwards along the same vector, then we're using the negative vector. So to get from A to O, we're going negative A. And then to get from O to B, we're still using the vector B. So our vector AB is going to be negative A plus B. And we can rewrite that as B take away A. So to work out the position vector AB, then we are taking the second component and we're subtracting the first component to give us our position vector. So, a couple of examples. We're going to find the components of the vector mn if m equals negative 3, 5, negative 2, and n is 7, 3, 5. So the first thing we want to do is we want to write the coordinates m and n as their position vectors. So lowercase m or om as a vector is negative 3, 5, negative 2. For coordinate n, our position vector n or on is going to be 7, 3, 5. Now, to work out component n, mn, we're going to take component n and take away position vector m in order to work this out. So n was 7, 3, 5. And we're going to take away negative 3, 5, negative 2. Now the trickiest part of this is actually remembering that if we're taking away a negative number, then that means that we're adding it on. So 7 take away negative 3 is the same as 7 plus 3, which is 10. 3 take away 5 is negative 2, and 5 take away negative 2 is going to give us 5 plus 2, which is 7. So mn has the components 10, negative 2, and 7. And if I wanted to write them in unit vector form, it would be 10i minus 2j plus 7k. So, as we previously mentioned, the magnitude of a vector is the length of that vector. And if you remember back to Nat 5, the magnitude of A is denoted by A bar. So we've got bars around the A to demonstrate that it's the magnitude that we're looking for. So the magnitude of the vector A, where the components are A1, A2, and A3, is given by magnitude of A equals the square root of A1 squared plus A2 squared plus A3 squared. So if we look at this example, we're going to calculate the magnitude of x equals 2i take away 5j plus k. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write um, position vector x in component form. So we've got two i's, we've got negative 5j's, and we've got 1k. Now we want to work out the magnitude of that vector. So we're going to do 2 squared plus negative 5 squared plus 1 squared. And if you've got a calculator, you can put that in. But make sure that, unless it tells you to round, that you leave it as a third. So we've got the square root of 4 plus, and remember, a negative number squared is positive. And so that gives us an answer of root 30. We'll give it a quick check to see if we can simplify it. There are no factors of 30, there are perfect squares, so therefore root 30 is the magnitude of x in its simplest form. And we can just say that that's root 30 units. So let's have a look at the distance formula. So the distance formula is basically taking two 3D coordinates and we're working out the distance between those two coordinates using um, 3D Pythagoras. So we're working out the difference in the X coordinates, the difference in the Y coordinates, and the difference of the Z coordinates. And then we can um, add them together and square root them to work out the actual distance between those two points in space. So 
if we write down d equals the square root, and make sure that you put your coordinates in the same order each time. So I'm going to say negative 4 take away 3 squared plus 1 take away negative 2 squared and 0 take away 7 squared. So that gives us a square root of negative 7 squared. 1 take away negative 2 is 3 squared. We've got another negative 7 squared, which gives us a square root of 49 plus 9 plus 49, which gives us a final answer of root 107 units. So you're going to go to the handout now and try the position vectors exercise on page 24, questions 9 to 13, and the answers are at the back. Any problems? Just ask.